goodness and his mercy, that his mercy is new every morning. Every morning. Hallelujah. And I need it. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, come on. Just worship him a little bit longer. Worship him a little bit longer. Invite his presence into this place. Because it's in our worship and in our praise that he dwells. It's in our amongst our worship where miracles are worked. It's in our worship where healings take place. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise your name, Jesus. Praise your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. Worship with our praise team as they bring some praise and songs to us. Just, oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Worship with them this morning. I wonder if somebody came into this house with a personal praise this morning for a God that makes a way where there is no way for a God that is constant in the middle of the valley lift your hands and worship him as we praise his name you made a way don't know how but you did it you made a way Standing here, not knowing how we'll get through this test, but holding on to faith you know best, and nothing can catch you by surprise. You've got this figured out, you're watching us now. And when it looks as if we can't win, you wrap us in your arms and stepped in. And everything we need you supply. You've got this in control. And now we know that you made a way. Come on, sing it if you know it. When our packs were against the wall And it looked as if it was all Lord, you, you made a way And we're standing here Only because you made a way Come on, if he's made a way for you Just release a praise Give him the glory this morning back on where we come from oh it's because of you lord because of you and nothing we've done to deserve the love deserve the love and mercy you shown your grace was strong enough to pick us up and you made a way when our backs were when our backs were against the wall and it looked as if it was over you, you made a way. And we're standing here, and we're standing here, only because you made a way. Oh, because you move mountains, and you cause walls to fall when your power. Perform miracles, there is nothing that's impossible, and we're standing here only 
somebody declare that this morning. You made a way. When I look back over my life, I see the hand of God. You, you made a way. In every trial and test, he was there. You, you made a Don't way. Don't know how. Don't know how, but you did it. Made a way. Don't know how. Don't know how, but you did it. of their circumstance, that God surrounded you even when you didn't know which way to turn. We're going to worship him and sing of how great he is this morning. This is how I fight my battles. 
None can compare to him. Oh, glory, 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 glory. Hallelujah. If you don't feel the presence of God in here this morning, your feeler's broken because he is here. He's here. If you've got a need, you need to lift your hands and receive your answer this morning. If you've got a need in your life, if you're sick, lift your hands and receive your healing. Oh, if you're addicted, lift your hands and receive your deliverance because the Almighty God is in this place this morning. Hallelujah. And He is a healer. He's a savior. He's a deliverer. He's my rescuer. He's my shield and my strength. There is no other God. There is no God like Him. He sits on the throne alone. Hallelujah. Woo. He has all power. All glory belongs to Him. There's nothing that He can't do. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Woo. I just feel like worshiping God a little bit in here this morning. I just feel like giving God some praise this morning because he's worthy. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. God, thank you for the little things in my life. God, it's easy to be thankful for the big things you do. But God, I'm just thankful that I woke up this morning. God, I'm thankful I was able to open my eyes and see the beauty of your creation. Oh, God, I thank you for your presence in this house this morning. Oh, hallelujah. God, I thank you for what you've already done in here. I thank you for filling someone with the Holy Ghost. I thank you, God, for delivering a sinner from bondage. I thank you for healing someone here today, God. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Woo. I tell you what, it's always good to come into the house of God, into his presence and feel a sweet spirit. I don't care how bad your week's been. I don't care how weak you felt. I don't care how beat up you've been. When you come into the house and you begin to lift your hands and give the almighty God praise, strength begins to come in to this feeble body. Oh, strength begins to build in the spirit that's been worn out by the cares of this world. Hallelujah. Like the song says, he made a way. He didn't only make a way. He became the way. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Hallelujah. Woo. I'm glad I know the way this morning. Hallelujah. I'm not like that apostle who said, how can, we, how can I go where you're going? I don't know where you're going. Jesus said, you know where I'm going. You know the way. I am the way, the truth, and the life. Oh, I'm so glad I know it this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. We want to go before the Lord in prayer this morning. We have, we have many needs among our saints. We have those that are sick, those that need a touch in their body. Brother Daryl Knox and Brother Daryl Goins need continued healing in their body. I know God's already begun a work. We just need God to continue and complete that work of healing in their bodies, to strengthen them, to encourage them, to minister to them. I know that there are others who are sick and in need today. If you know their names, please call their name in prayer. We remember Brother and Sister Overton in prayer this morning. They're traveling, celebrating their anniversary. But I want you to pray specifically that God would refresh them and renew their strength and renew their anointing, that they would come back here with a new fire and a new sense of, of power and a refreshing to minister to us because they are here to watch for our souls. We need to honor them. And just, while, I'm, while I'm saying that, sometimes call pastor just to say, Pastor, I just called to say that I love you and I appreciate you and I'm praying for you. We, we get hung up on sometimes. The only time we want to call pastors when we need something. But I'm going to encourage you this morning. Call him sometimes just to say, Pastor, I just called to tell you how much I appreciate you being there. I appreciate you watching for my soul, and I want you to know that I love you. And, and, and be a part of their encouragement. Minister to them, to Brother and Sister Overton and their family, the way they minister to us. Play it, pay it back a little bit. So let's go before the Lord in prayer with these needs. And if there's anybody who needs special prayer, I want to invite you to come down front and we will lay hands on you, lay hands on you and pray for you as well. Oh, Father, we come before you today, God, in your presence, Lord. We feel your presence, your mighty power in this place. God, and we bring these needs before you, Lord. 
bring our petitions, God. We ask you to touch Brother Darrell Goins today, Lord, in his body, Lord, that you would continue the work of healing that you've already started. God, that you would complete it, strengthen him, and encourage him, lift him up. God, Brother Darrell Knox, Lord, that you would touch his body this morning, God, that you would strengthen him and encourage him, God, so that he could be in church with us. God, we love you today, and we thank you, God. There are others that are sick, Lord, in our, amongst our body, God. We ask you to touch them, heal them, Lord. There are those that are discouraged, God, those that are brought down because of the sickness that's among us, God, and, and, and has spread around this world. But, God, we ask you, God, to reach down in their homes, wherever they are today, God, and touch them, strengthen them, let them feel your presence and encourage them, Lord. We give you praise and glory and honor this morning, God, because it is you who does the work, God. It's you and only you, God, that can heal and deliver. And we praise you this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. If you're glad to be in the house of God today, can you shout Jesus? Hallelujah. It feels so good, so good to be here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And if you hadn't noticed, we have a, we have a visitor with us this morning. He's going to be ministering to us today. This is Brother Hanson from up at Brother Reaver's Church in Baltimore. I want to welcome him this morning. He's going to minister to us here in a little while. But we want to give you an opportunity right now to bless the church with what God has blessed you with. We're going to receive our tithes and offering as our praise team sings us another song. So the basket's here on the front, if you would. Please bring your tithes and offerings and give unto the Lord in a spirit of praise. Thank you. Give and it will come back to you. Good measure, press down, shaking together and running over. Give and it will come back to you. When you give, you give to the Lord. Give and it will come back to you. Good measure, press down, shaking together and running over. Give and it will come back to you. When you give, you give to the Lord. Give and it will come back to you. Good measure, press down, shaking together and running over. Give and it will come back to you. When you give, you give to the Lord. Give, and it will come back to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaking together and running over. Give, and it will come back to you. When you give, you give to the Lord. When you give, you give to the Lord. When you give, you give to the Lord. church. I wonder if you know that God is a way maker, that he's a miracle working God, that no matter what it is that weighs us down this morning, that he is faithful and that he is able to meet every need. I want us to worship him this morning. Let's invite him into this place. Oh, you are worthy of the praise, Jesus. I honor you with all that I am, oh God. Have your way in me, Lord. Come. 
promise keep light in the darkness my god that is who you are you are here working in our midst i worship you come on and worship him i worship you
on somebody tap into what God's trying to do in this place he is here moving he is here working he's looking for a hungry heart a desperate soul that's gonna worship him with all that I have within me I'm gonna enter into your courts with thanksgiving and praise oh I love you Jesus Promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Come on, let's just sing it in this place together. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Waymaker, waymaker. service today that God's going to make a way because he is the way maker he's making a way this morning for redemption and salvation he's making a way this morning for you to approach him oh to receive everything he has for you thank you Jesus God I thank you for being a way maker oh thank you God for being my healer my provider Oh, for being just my everything, God. Oh, God, you are. Just you are. Oh, hallelujah. All that I need, all that I am, you are. Hallelujah. I give you praise this morning, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. You can be seated for just a moment. But as you're seated, continue to praise the Lord and worship Him. I failed to mention earlier that uh, we are happy to have Sister Hanson and Brother Hanson's children with him this morning. I, I, and I, I say this, I, I know having his wife here is going to make him a better preacher because when my wife is present when I'm preaching, it, it makes me a better preacher, I think. Because I know she's praying for me, she's rooting for me, and, and uh, she's also uh, doing this when I start getting a little long-winded. And she don't even wear a watch, but she's pointing at her wrist. So I'm, I'm thinking maybe her wrist is hurting her or something. I don't know. But, but uh, we're glad to have you, Sister Hanson, and, and, and your children with us this morning. And I uh, pray that God blesses you. And how many of you are ready to receive, not just hear, but to receive the word of God? Amen. Brother Hanson, would you come and minister to us this morning? Praise the Lord. I'm glad to be here today. I'm glad to be in the house of the Lord. <clears throat> It's a privilege to come and to worship Jesus with fellow believers and know that God is in this place, that He's speaking, that He's working in this place. Hallelujah, Jesus. I love you, Lord. <clears throat> Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. I'm privileged to be here today, as I said, and um, I'm thankful that my wife is here. I won't have her say anything because I want to live. But I'm glad that she's here with me today. Um, <clears throat> and I just, maybe some of this will come out later in, in, in the sermon, but I just felt like maybe I should introduce myself, tell you who I am and a little bit about me. Um, I'm actually from Portland, Oregon. 
And so um, two years ago, two and a half, it'd be two years ago, the Lord called me and my family to Baltimore to start a church in Baltimore. And so we are now in the process of planning a daughter work under Pastor Reaver. So that's why we're here in Maryland is because God called us from Portland, Oregon to come across the country so that he could plant a church in Baltimore City because we know that God has a purpose for Baltimore City. He has a purpose for every place on this earth, and God set me apart. Uh, he has a plan for me. He has a plan for you, and I'm thankful for that. I'm thankful that God has an intention for you today. God has an intention for today, for his word to speak into you and to, into me, and to begin a work and to continue a work in each of us. <clears throat> Um, I, if I could just be candid, I, I, I'm going to just have a slow takeoff today. But um, I, just, I just felt that the Lord wanted to minister today to some unmet expectations. How many of you have ever been disappointed in the way that your life turned? How many of you have ever been obeying God's voice and your life took a wild turn that you didn't expect and you wonder, is God really going to accomplish what he began in me? Sometimes that happens in our own individual lives, but I believe it also happens in a corporate body, that it happens in a congregation, that God can speak and ordain and begin a work in a congregation, in individuals, and bring them together for a purpose. And yet in our own humanity, in our own lives, we look at the, what's happening in our lives. We look at the turn of events, and I say, God, what happened? I say, God, are you really working in all of this? As that song that we just sang said, even when I can't see it, he's working. And God is still working in this hour. And COVID, on top of everything else, has just spun out all of the plans that I had and all the plans that most of you had. And so we're in a unique season where we have COVID that threw everything off. And then we have each of our own individual lives. We have the decisions we've made, the decisions others have made, the calling of God on others that affected what we thought was going to be and what we planned to be. But I'm here today because I feel in the Holy Ghost that God wants to remind the church and to reestablish in the spirit of, of this congregation and in your life as an individual that God is at work and that you can count on the design of Jesus Christ coming to pass in your life. I'm going to read from Isaiah chapter number 55. Isaiah chapter 55 and verses 10 and 11. Isaiah 55, the prophet speaking under the unction of the Spirit says, For as the rain comes down, and the snow from heaven, and do not return there, but water the earth, and make it bring forth bud, that it may give seed to the sower, and bread to the eater, so that my word, so shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me void. But it shall accomplish what I please, and it shall prosper in the thing for which I sent it. Psalms chapter number 119 verse 89 says, Forever, O Lord, your word is settled in heaven. You can be seated. Jesus, 
Let the word that you want for the congregation be spoken, Jesus. Let there be an ear to hear what the Spirit would say to the church today, God. In the name of Jesus, I come against any confusion, any distraction, oh God, that would, uh, that would uh, frustrate your design today. But let it be uh, that faith would arise in this house today. Uh, that you are at work and you have spoken. And what you have begun, uh, you will complete it. In the name of Jesus, and we give you praise, Lord. Uh, you are sovereign, God. Uh, you are holy, God. Uh, you are without fail, oh God. You're without failure and mistake. And I worship you and bless your name this morning for there is nobody like you. There's no one like you in the heavens above. There's no one like you on the earth beneath God. And we put our trust in you, in Jesus name. Hallelujah Jesus. I worship you. I worship you. Hallelujah Jesus. I'm confident today uh, that the word of God is forever settled uh, in heaven. Uh, that when God speaks uh, what he says, it will be accomplished. Uh, God does not speak uh, haphazardly. God is not going to uh, just out of the side of his mouth uh, speak without having an intention for what he says. Uh, but his word uh, is faithful uh, and his word uh, is true. Uh, when God says something is going to happen, everything that I live for, everything that I believe is founded in this principle first, that the word of God is sure and true, that the word of God will not fail. But when God said, let there be light, the light turned on because when God speaks, every Everything he says becomes a reality. It comes to pass. It will be accomplished in your life. God's word is so intentional that you can bank on it that when God speaks into your life it will come to pass and when you open the word of God and you let it begin to speak into your life I'm telling you that when this beautiful word of God the expression of all of God of his character and of his plan when you open that word of God and you begin to say God let your word speak into my life. I can assure you that what God speaks into your life, it will not return void to him. What God wants to accomplish through his word, it will be accomplished in your life. We can take confidence in that. God was so intent about his word having its fulfillment that when humanity fell in the Garden of Eden, when you and I and all of our humanity have failed to obey the plan of God, when we've rejected the design of God, God's Word is still so intent on its purpose that Jesus ended up coming on this earth. You see, the Word of God was made flesh is what John chapter number 1 says. The Word became flesh, and we beheld His glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. You see, the design of God. The design of God when he created this earth was that you and I as humanity would be able to walk with him and have relationship with him. His design was that there wouldn't be shame between you and me and between us and our God. God designed it that we could truly have relationship with him. But we know how sin separated 
humanity. But God's word and his design was so intent that for 2,000 years, for, excuse me, 4,000 years, God began through the Old Testament to write the story of redemption, making sure that there would come a day 4,000 years after the failure of Adam and Eve where the word would robe itself in flesh, that God would robe himself in flesh so that he could come into this earth so that you and I could have relationship with him again. And he laid down his life on the cross. He laid down his own life and bled and died to show you and I as humanity that he would have his will performed that you could know the God who created you that you could walk with the God who loved you enough to form you in your mother's womb hallelujah I'm talking today about the word of God that will never fail the word of God will never, ever fail. Hallelujah. I'm so thankful that his word will never fail. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I know today that I'm speaking to people that are at every stage in their walk with Jesus. I know uh, that there's people here that perhaps uh, have served Jesus uh, faithfully uh, for decades. I know there's others here perhaps uh, that you have just began uh, to decide to walk with Jesus. And I'm speaking as well to a congregation at large uh, as a body of believers. And today I want to encourage you uh, to allow the Word of God uh, to do its work inside of you to allow the word of God to speak to you, to speak to the design that he has for you in your life. Because his word is sure. But many times, if I can be honest, my life has not played out the way that I expected it to. And I, I just feel led to share a little bit of my story, not all of my story today, but, uh, but I, I was born uh, in Portland, Oregon. Uh, my father planted a church in Portland, Oregon, uh, so I, I'm a preacher's kid, and I grew up in the same church uh, for since I was four years old, going to Portland Pentecostals. Uh, God called me to ministry. Uh, I, I was the youth pastor. Then I was the assistant pastor, uh, and then they elected me pastor. Uh, uh, Portland Pentecostals uh, and nine months later uh, God speaks and says uh, I want you to go to Baltimore uh, and plant a church uh, in Baltimore for my namesake I'm just being real with you that was not in my plan and that was not in the plan of Portland Pentecostals the church did not expect it to it hurt they didn't like it. I didn't necessarily like it, but I had to learn to trust that God has a plan in what he does. I'm here to remind you that God has an intention for this congregation that cannot be stopped and overturned because one person or another ends up where you didn't expect them to end up because the word of God is sure and his intention is true and his plans for this congregation are still going to be accomplished there will be a harvest there will be a transformation of this community because the word of God does not return void when God speaks it will be accomplished I assure you that God does not make a mistake and we cannot get in the habit as humanity uh, of thinking uh, that when everything goes the way I didn't expect uh, that God has turned his back on me uh, but I'm here to remind you uh, that when God starts uh, he will finish it uh, it will be accomplished uh, God will do the work in your life 
God is faithful and His Word is sure. His Word is true. The Word of God never fails because our God never fails. Hallelujah. I'm so thankful that the Word of God will not return void unto our Savior. I'm so thankful for that. Jesus Christ, He robed Himself in flesh. And then we see throughout the Gospels the written story of God in flesh. And you see a struggle. And you see you see all of the trials of life and the temptation of Satan himself uh, trying to derail uh, Jesus Christ's purpose uh, on this earth. Uh, And then you see uh, the the, the scribes and the Pharisees, you see the religious people uh, completely rebel against Jesus uh, and completely uh, turn on him. uh, And they uh, do what seems to be frustrating the plan of God in the flesh, uh, in my own mind. Uh, Why would it be uh, that God would come to this earth to establish a a kingdom uh, only to be killed uh, and crucified. Uh, But you and I we have the luxury uh, of looking backwards. Uh, We have the luxury of looking uh, from the other side of Calvary uh, and seeing uh, that God had a plan uh, that His blood uh, would be shed uh, for my sin and your sin. uh, And He would resurrect the third day uh, so that He could pour out uh, the Holy Ghost in your life in my life and in the church because God had a plan but I'm here to remind the church today that we may be on the on the front side of situations in our lives and we can have the same perspective that the disciples of Jesus had They ran and they hid when Jesus was arrested. After the crucifixion, before they knew of his resurrection, they had their heads hung low and they're crying and they're walking down the street with little hope, not understanding that God does not come short on his plans and on his design. And I'm here to remind you today that if your life has taken a turn for the worse. If things are not looking up in your personal life, I'm here to remind you that the Word of God has spoken into your life and God will perform what He started in your life. He won't leave you. He won't leave you comfortless. He'll come to you. He's drawing you unto Himself because our God is faithful. Hallelujah. I'm so thankful. I'm so thankful that Jesus came to execute judgment for my sin and yours so that I would not be held accountable for my sin, but I could be healed. I could be set free. The payment of sin could be put over me in baptism. The blood of Jesus could wash me clean. But that is the greatest demonstration that the Word of God is faithful and sure, and he's going uh, to work uh, in your life. Uh, Do not fear as a church, uh, because Jesus said uh, in Luke 12, 32, do not fear, little flock, uh, for it is your Father's good pleasure uh, to give you the kingdom. Uh, It's the design of God uh, for the church to grow. Uh, It's the design of God uh, that as believers and disciples of Jesus, uh, that the kingdom of God uh, would come alive in you and I. That the kingdom of God would go forward uh, through you and I. And if God spoke it, uh, you can rest assured uh, that He's going to accomplish uh, what He began uh, in you. 
2 Corinthians 1, 20 through 22, uh, Paul says, For all the promises of God in Him are yes, and in Him, amen, to the glory of God through us. Now He who establishes us with you in Christ and has anointed us in God, who also has sealed us and given us the Spirit in our hearts, as a guarantee, God put the Holy Ghost in the church. He put it in you as a guarantee that what He began in you and I, it will be accomplished in your life. The Word of God is sure and it's true. It's going to come to pass it's going to come to pass. I want to encourage you today. And I want to challenge you today uh, that no matter where you are uh, in this walk with God, uh, and no matter uh, how off track you seem to think uh, that the plan of God for your life has gotten, uh, no matter how many hiccups uh, there's been in the road, bumps in the road, uh, turns that you didn't expect, uh, mistakes that you've made, uh, or mistakes mistakes that you think others have made, that I'm here to assure you that God's word is true and it will not return to him void. When he intends something, it will come to pass. He's going to do a work in their life. The life of those that you speak the word of God into. He's going to do, it, to do a work in their lives. What he's spoken into your life, it's going to come to pass. I think, uh, I'm, I'm just thinking because this is really fresh in my mind uh, about a wonderful instance of this that we've got to understand that when God calls you uh, to do something, when he says he's going to work in your life, uh, it's going to come to pass. Uh, and we've got to learn as a church, uh, this is something that we've got to learn as believers. Uh, if you're beginning your walk with Jesus, uh, I want to encourage you uh, to hold on to this principle and not let go. Uh, this this is the understanding we've got to have is that the Word of God, it will do its work, but it's a process that God alone has the authority and has the ability to make sure that it comes to pass. And if you and I can rest in the Word of God and we can trust that what He said is true and we can just be obedient to what He tells us to do, then I will assure you uh, that God will come through uh, in his time, uh, in his way uh, because only God uh, is responsible for his word coming to pass. There's a woman... Uh, there's a woman in Baltimore that we've been, so so right now we're not having church services uh, because we haven't started uh, having church services as a, as a congregation. Uh, but the Lord had led uh, me and my wife, and now we've got others from Abundant Life that are going with us, uh, and we go every week. <clears throat> And we go to Penn North Station. If you know Baltimore, you probably know where I'm talking about. Penn North Station is right. That intersection is where the Freddie Gray riots began. Is right there on Penn North Station. And God told me to begin to walk and to pray over that area. And so me and my wife began to walk and pray over that area. And some of the people from Abundant Life have joined us. And every Sunday afternoon, afternoon uh, we go out uh, and we pray uh, and we started talking to people uh, and saying hey can we pray with you uh, and, and if you would like a Bible study uh, we'll give you a Bible study uh, and we got flyers that got a phone number on there uh, saying if you want uh, something different for your life uh, if you're tired uh, of the endless cycle uh, of pain and addiction uh, and a bondage uh, then would you call this number uh, because Jesus has something better 
better for your life. And so we've been walking and, and we've been praying. And, 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 uh, and me and my family, we went back to Portland to visit in August. And I got a phone call the day I came back into town. And somebody was calling that phone number. And, and, and they had a block number. And so I didn't even know who it was. I answered it. And it was a woman on the other end. And she wouldn't even give me her name because she'd been so hurt, wounded, and discarded that she didn't know if she really trusted me. And so she said, I just want you to talk to me and tell me what you're all about. And so I started talking to her about the Word of God and about the love of Jesus and that God has a plan for Baltimore City and God has a plan for you. And so she shared her name is Sherry. And so I met her in a Burger King parking lot the next day. And she was she was like a half hour late. And when she, when she met me, she was so strung out on drugs that she would fall asleep mid-sentence as I'm trying to talk to her and work with her. And I prayed with her. I gave her a few scriptures. But all the time, she's so wiped out on drugs that she can't even stay awake. The next week, she met again with me and my wife. The same story. She can't even keep her eyes open. She's nodding up because she's so bound by these drugs. But we prayed with her, and we saw her maybe a couple weeks later still struggling, and we prayed with her. That was in August. I heard nothing from Sherry. I didn't know where she was. Occasionally, her name would come on my heart and I would call her name out in prayer. But two weeks ago, I got a phone call from Sherry out of the blue. And she said, Pastor, I'm clean from drugs and I want to be a part of what God's doing in your life. And so uh, last week, for the first time, uh, me and my wife got to go to her home, uh, and she was clean. Uh, her eyes were clear, uh, and we had a Bible study. Uh, what am I saying? Uh, I'm saying uh, that when God starts something, uh, it will be accomplished. Uh, it doesn't matter uh, what the evidence around you says. Uh, it does not matter how broken uh, the heart is, uh, no matter how bound uh, the soul is when the word of God begins to speak when you allow the word of God into the heart when you speak the word of God into somebody else's life I'm here to tell you that word of God it will not return void I promise you I assure you that God will work God will come through because his word is sure and forever settled in heaven would you worship the God who spoke life into existence? I worship you. I clap to you. I lift my voice to you because you are the author and the finisher of my faith. Hallelujah. He's faithful. His word is true. His word will be accomplished in your life and in my life. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. I want to start tying this together because the Lord is challenging you and I as the church, as new believers, as established believers, to understand and begin to live with faith in the Word of God and in the plan that He has begun inside of you and I. I want you to understand there's a principle that we've got to understand that if we understand this, it will transform the way that you listen to the voice of God and the way that you look at the Word of God. In 1 Peter chapter number 1, verses 22 through 25, this is the apostle, and he says, Since you have purified your soul in obeying the truth through the Spirit, <clears throat> In sincere love of the brethren, love one another fervently with a pure heart, having been born again, not of corruptible seed, but incorruptible 
through the Word of God which lives and abides forever because all flesh is grass and all the glory of man as a flower of the grass. The grass withers and its flower falls away, but the Word of the Lord endures forever. Now this is a word which by the gospel was preached to you. We've got to understand, if you've not been born again of the water in the Spirit, I encourage you today to understand and to embrace and say, God, I want this experience. Because when you and I are born again of the water in the Spirit, when we're baptized into the name of Jesus Christ, we're baptized into Christ, we put on Christ so that we can rise in newness of life. And when God pours out the Holy Spirit inside of you like he did in the book of Acts when they spoke with other tongues as the Spirit gave utterance. When you are born again of the water and the Spirit, you've got to understand that what has happened to you in that moment is just as powerful and as real as the creation story. You see, God uh, was speaking. Uh, God looked at this earth uh, that was without form and void. It had no purpose. It was darkness. Uh, it had no reason for being. Uh, and the Spirit of the Lord, the Scripture says, began to hover uh, on the waters uh, in Genesis chapter number 1. It says the Spirit of God began to just brood uh, and begin to just hover over uh, that sense of hopelessness, uh, that sense of no purpose. Uh, and then uh, God spoke and said let there be light and there was light that was a powerful moment when the spirit of God began to move and then the word of God spoke everything that is with purpose came into being and when you and I come to Jesus with our broken lives our confused situations our pointless habits and we allow the spirit of God to begin to move on you and I and we allow the spirit of God to be poured out inside of us then the word of God can speak into your life first Peter that I just read it says this it says that you are you are born again not of corruptible seed but incorruptible how through the word of God do you understand that when you were born again of the water and the spirit, the intention that God had for creation that was never frustrated, even when Adam and Eve sinned and failed, it did not stop God from building relationship with humanity. That that same intention and that same sovereignty and passion of God is birthed in you when you're born of the spirit. Spirit of God and the Word of God is implanted inside of you. God's plan for your life is brought to life and been birthed in you through the new birth experience. And just as sure as God is about this Word affecting our world, He's sure about His Word affecting you today. I'm here to tell you that God's Word it won't return void to him what he starts in your life it will be finished in your life I promise you if you will allow his word to speak he will do exceedingly abundantly above all you can ask or think he'll do a work that you'll be surprised with a work that the world will step back and say how could it be done I'll tell you how it's because the word of God. The Word of God is powerful. The Word of God is sure. And God has not given up on you today. God has not stopped working in you. He has not stopped looking at your life and saying, I put my Word in you and it will not return void. It will accomplish what I began to do. I know I know that COVID upset everybody's plans for the church. I know it may have upset the plans for your family. 
I know that there's all the other situations, maybe even poor choices that you made, maybe family situations that you could not control that have ripped apart every bit of hope you had of God doing what you thought he was going to do in your life. But I'm here to tell you today that when God spoke into your life and when you allowed the word of God to come into your life and into your heart and into your spirit, that God is married to his word and to the design of his word word and he will fulfill what he began in your life he will finish what he started inside of you today if you stand across the sanctuary as we're coming to a close I want to encourage you today that the word of God is true that the word of God is sure and that he will finish what he has begun in you I want to return really quickly to where I began in Isaiah chapter number 55 verses 1 through 11 God speaking of his word and that it will not return void. And he says this. For as the rain comes down and the snow from heaven and do not return there but water the earth and make it bring forth bud that it may give seed to the sower, bread to the eater. So shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me void. If you just close your eyes for a minute, I want you to just envision for a moment this, this amazing cycle that we have in creation of the, of the water cycle. So you, have this, you have the vast oceans of the earth. And evaporation happens and it pulls that moisture out of the ocean. And into the clouds. And then they're relentlessly pushed by the winds all across our world. All across where you live and where I live. And into even, the, even into the heartland of America. And when it's the right time, it begins to rain. Or it begins to snow. And when that rain and that snow hits the ground... It doesn't stop, but it has a purpose. And so it does what only that water can do. It, it saturates into the soil. And it does a work to bring life to the plants and, and trickle through those plants and, and feed all of the wildlife. And, and at some point, that moisture, whether it goes through a, a plant and an animal or whatever, but eventually it finds itself back into a stream. And that stream relentlessly tore it down into bigger streams until you have a river. That river will flow with all of its might as every molecule of water is passionately working to return to its original source until finally it finds itself opened into the sea and it goes back to where it belongs. God said that his word was just the same. That when he speaks, it's going to affect everything it touches. But it's not going to stop working until one day it returns to the God who spoke it. But it's not going to return to the God who spoke it until it has accomplished everything that God designed for it to accomplish. And I'm here to tell you that when God spoke into your life and you were born again of the water and the spirit and the word of life conceived in you a purpose. When God spoke into you, He created a 
purpose for your life. And it will be accomplished if you and I could see ourselves as being just like that water that we relentlessly and continually pursue the source of that life which is Christ Jesus. I'm here to tell you that if you will pursue the creator of the earth that spoke you into life, if you will let that work and that word be, oh God, the the, the passion of your soul and that you would relentlessly and for all of your life say no matter where I go, no matter what I touch, no matter what I do, I will not stop until one day I am reunited with my Father in heaven who made me, who loved me, and who had an intention for me. I'm here right now just as a vessel of God saying, would you come to the altar if that's okay? Or would you find a place to pray and say, God, I trust your word and I will not let go of your promises. I will not let go of your plans. Hallelujah, Jesus. He's working in your life. He will not stop. Hallelujah, Jesus. That's it. I don't know what this protocol here. If you want to stay in your seat, that's fine. But would you lift your voice to heaven? Would you cry out to the Lord and say, I trust your word. Your word is true, God. Speak life into me and I will embrace it. God, I will trust you. I will keep my faith in you because you never fail. Let's see, he's got a purpose for you. He's got a purpose for you. He will not stop until he's finished it. Will you stop? Don't stop. Don't stop obeying his word. Don't stop reaching to the God who spoke life into you. Would you come down around the altar and gather around these and pray with them? Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, blessed be your name, oh Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Saints, would you come down and gather with, pray with these in the altar? Hallelujah. Oh, we love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 